COVID-19 restrictions are financially hurting independent booksellers, which were in a bind thanks to the likes of Amazon. But now these mom-and-pop establishments have bookshop.org. Sellers that don't have an online store can join the website and they, along with the authors, get more than 75% of the profits. Bookshop.org currently operates in the United States and the UK, but the hope is to expand around the world. Let's talk to the founder and CEO of Bookshop.org, Andy Hunter. Hi Andy, lovely to have you on Showcase. Thanks a lot for joining us. So, let's put this whole thing into context first. You thought that something was wrong in the system, that's why you came up with this project. So, tell me what kind of a situation were independent bookshops in when you launched bookshop.org? Yeah, well, for the past um, 10 or 15 years, Amazon has been growing at a, at a rapid pace and has taken control over 50% of the market uh, for book sales. And independent bookstores are essential for a culture around books. You know, they're really wonderful places where children's schools, book groups, book clubs, authors, everybody and readers connect to each other. And they're really essential for having a healthy culture around books. So um, I wanted to make sure that they were going to be sustainable in the future. And that meant they need to be able to sell books online and their loyal customers who love them need to be able to support them when they buy books online and not just shop on, um, on other online retailers. So we wanted to create a simple platform where it was really easy without any financial commitment, without any money or um, technical knowledge, a bookstore could set up a page online and start selling books to their customers. Um, and yeah, that's why we launched it. And so far, it's been really great. We have 900 stores in the US that are on the platform and over 250 stores in the UK. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I have two questions about what you've just said. D does this mean that independent bookstores cannot survive without an online presence? Yes, I think, I think that's almost true now. It's certainly true right now because of the pandemic. A lot of stores are not able to open their doors right now. And a lot of customers aren't comfortable shopping in person. So for right now, you know, the pandemic has made it ex really essential, but in general, e-commerce, the number of people purchasing stuff online, that's increasing every year. So every local business needs to have an e-commerce strategy. Most local businesses have customers that, that want to support them. And if it's just as easy as shopping on, their shops as it is shopping on Amazon, then they have a good chance. But um, up until now, it's been difficult for stores to have to set up their own websites and mm -hmm. deal with it. So we just made it really easy to allow people to do that. Okay. Well, you sort of answered my second question, but would you call this a COVID-19 project? Is that uh, when and why you came up with it? No, we really came up with it just to ensure a healthy, sustainable future for bookstores. As more and more people shop online, we just want to make sure that bookstores have an e-commerce strategy that they can live with that's easy for them and that's easy for the customers. So bookshop.org was created to make it all simple, and it was really working. But when, um, when COVID-19 hit, it became essential like it might have been optional before for them to have an have a website it might have been a nice to have but when um bookshop launched and then COVID 19 hit six weeks later suddenly stores couldn't put their employees at health at risk by having them come into work sometimes they were shut down orders and the stores were not able to fulfill orders and so having an, a way to sell books online and deliver them directly to people's home became completely essential so while it, while it wasn't created to solve COVID 19 issues mm -hmm. it didn't a great solution for COVID-19. Okay, Andy, let's get realistic here. I am, I am an, I'm a reader. Uh, I read a lot of books. I buy a lot of books. Why should I use your website instead of, let's say, Amazon? Because obviously it's pretty much the same books, but then it is cheaper for sure. Amazon is cheaper. So um, what value is there in using your website? Yeah, well, it's a socially conscious value for sure. If all you care about is price, if that's all that matters to you, then you can continue to shop on Amazon. If you care about human beings and you care about your high street and your communities, um, then supporting local businesses is extremely important. Uh, you know, we connect with each other in common places, in places like bookstores, 
in downtowns or high streets. That's where communities gather. And that's where like really great people work. And for readers, bookstores often were like gateways into a love of reading. When I was a kid and I would go into a bookstore, I would just sit in the aisles for hours and hours. They were my favorite places to go. And I've dedicated my life to books after that. Bookstores work with schools, they work with libraries, they work with all kinds of institutions in their communities. And they're really, really important. And if you want to like shop on bookshop.org, what you're doing is you're saying, I care, I understand that where I spend my money matters. It makes a difference to my community. And I don't mind paying an extra 50 cents or dollar in order to make sure that I'm supporting my values when I shop online. Mm-hmm. And that I care that when the pandemic's over, I emerge into a world that I want to live in, where there are still bookstores, where downtowns are not filled with shuttered, shuttered storefronts. You know, we want to have restaurants. We want to have live like bookstores, we want to have all kinds of local businesses still around after the pandemic, and they're yeah. all suffering right now. Amazon's not suffering. Amazon is up. You know, their sales are at a record high. <laughs> so they don't need your money right now, but small businesses do. All right. Let's flip the coin for a second, because it seems like a great project, and you're doing great in the US and now in the UK as well. Very quick success. But then, in marketplaces, we usually see independent stores in the long term being dependent on the seller. So yours is a marketplace as well. So what are you doing or are you doing anything to ensure that independent bookstores in the long term don't only rely on you or become dependent on you really? Yeah, well, we've done a number of things. First of all, we put in our articles of incorporation that we would never sell to Amazon or any other major retailer so that they can trust that we're not going to sell the company to somebody else who isn't going to protect their interests. Second, we are applying for B Corps a certification, which will put us under independent oversight for, um, to make sure that we're an ethical company um, that is adhering to our mission. Third, we have a board of directors that is populated by booksellers. So we have a lot of independent local bookstore owners on our board of directors who vote about what we do to make sure that we're never going to do anything that's against their interests. So those are some of the protections that we've put into place, but we are very, very careful about that and very sincere about it because we want to be a long-term solution for the industry. And, and we understand that um, stores might be a little skeptical or wary of, of a changing environment where like we can put the squeeze on them, but you know, that's why we set up as a B corporation and put independent booksellers on our board because we're mission-based. We are mm-hmm. not, you know, we're, we're in it to save the bookstores. That's our cause. Okay, Andy. And um, how realistic do you think it is that we imagine independent bookstores can compete with Amazon? I think we're seeing it's very realistic. You know, there's, there's more value um, that bookstores can provide. They, they have human beings working there and human beings provide the best book recommendations and the best customer service and the best personality. And, you know, we're, what we're trying to do at bookshop.org is have some of that personality and personal curation and human feeling carry through on the web experience. And we're going to be adding more and more features to make that true. Um, but you know, I never bought a book because a computer algorithm recommended it to me. I buy books <laughs> because people about people that I love or respect tell me that I should read a book and I think most people are like that they want to have a human connection even when they're shopping online and that's what bookstores and independent booksellers can provide that's lovely thank you Andy Hunter for joining us on showcase today and good luck with your project Mm -hmm.